on tourism. It's an amazing journey that Myrna has to take, and I gather it's taken almost 10 years for it to be birthed. But I think for every one of us in this room, we are very pleased and we're excited that it's done and that she's actually fulfilled a vision and a dream. It's very important that whenever something is in your heart that you, you birth it. I think many people that are very creative, they go through many experiences when they have ideas and they have visions and the frustrations of life sometimes don't allow it to come through. But we are really pleased that she's done it, aren't we? Yes. We are really, really pleased. My heart is actually quite full this evening because it is quite a journey, it's quite a feat. A few years back, I came across a letter that was written by an artist called Aaron Douglas, an American, African-American artist, and he wrote a letter to Langston Hughes. I think most of you know who Langston Hughes is. He's a, an African-American poet. And it was, the t it was written roughly around the, last, the turn of the last century. And in this letter, Aaron said to Langston, Langston, we must create, we must write, we must speak, we must come together and bring our art together. And in, just to give you a very quick history lesson, slavery had just kind of finished in the 1866 in America and around the turn of the last century, which is the 1900s, there was, there was this kind of unrest, this restlessness amongst the African Caribbean people. They weren't seeing their culture, they weren't seeing their art brought forward. And they wrestled with this. It wasn't until a catalyst of people got together, Langston Hughes being one of them, and Aaron Douglas, and they said, we must come together and create. I don't know about you, but more recently, in this century, I've been feeling that emphasis again, that a lot of writers from the African diaspora, they're coming together and they're creating. Writers, um, artists, you know, poets, there's a, there's a plethora of artists that are coming through. And it's something that we must celebrate, especially here in England, where we like to think that we have a, a multicultural society. If we have these things, we need to hear these voices, don't we? We need to hear these voices. And I think that Nona's voice is going to be one, and it has been one in, this, in, in, the, in the writing of this book. Within this book, it's going to be reviewed later on, but within this book, Myrna is actually dealing with the duality of her identity. I think most of us who are brought up here as black British, we have that sense of duality. And Du Bois, who was one, another famous writer, he talked about how we have to find ourselves in the culture that we're in. We need to have a voice. And again, I'm going to stress, this is a wonderful occasion. I know that you're full of love for her this evening, and you want this book to succeed. It, it, it's, it is a natural sort of law, universal law, that once you've birthed something, it will be celebrated. And I think she's done that quite aptly in her work. In fact, the saying is, I wrote it down very quickly this afternoon, if you follow your, if you follow your dreams, the doors will open. So now you follow your dreams and the doors will open. We're very pleased to be here tonight. The books are going to be on sale here and they're retailing at $9.99. This could be your one, one act of faith in supporting her and getting this dream to be a reality. You never know, that purchase could go to a friend, a friend's friend, and you know the story. It goes on and on and on. Let's help her celebrate this launch and make this book a reality in the public domain. My, my warm thanks again for being here, and let's put our hands together for Myrna. This is Myrna's night. And without further ado, I'm going to pass over to Myrna. Um, no, is it Patricia? Patricia, Ashley, who will take over from me now. Thank you. Good evening. We're going to start with this. An incredible journey for the author, or was it? We are here today to join with Luna to look at the other side of tourism. It is indeed an incredible novel. Did the author really discover who she was? Did she find her true identity? Who is she? Is she a black British woman? Jamaican, black British Jamaican, African Caribbean? Did the disparity in years between her visits to Jamaica, 
do much to enhance her own cultural identity and self-awareness. The author wants her readers to decide. And alas, I felt I had made my own decision, having to review this incredible tiny novel as a Trinidadian, a Caribbean woman of the soil living in Britain. This book is filled with personal experiences, self-discovery, and honesty. I had the honor of reading the first manuscript, and then looking on as the author developed a novel with much determination and deep aspirations to tell her story and share her experiences with us and the rest of the world. To understand the other side of tourism is to understand the author, a truly incredible creative person whose sheer willpower to find her identity inspired a book that is written with such wit, humor, gaiety, and honesty. One cannot help but read it, and read it again and again, each time discovering something new, something more amusing, or discovering a bit more about the author herself. From a tourism perspective, it is important to note that the more you travel throughout an island, the more you discover different classes of people, Hospitality differs. Sometimes one can lose the essence of a whole country by being too myopic in one's vision about where you are at that point in time. Coming with your own preconceptions, assumptions about how a country is and it should be, especially in the author's case, having her Jamaican heritage negated by her mother. For many people and for Jamaicans themselves, Jamaica remains a truly incredible place, rich in cultural heritage, with a culture that has been embraced globally. Jamaica has its own unique identity among its Caribbean neighbors. To discover that is to truly find a place, a space, an identity of one's own. You will find when you visit a beach as a single foreign woman, there are characters that will come up to you and want to know if they could join you or do something for you. The attitude is to be polite, but still, and sometimes, by asking questions about the country, they are willing to just sit and chat with you and tell you a lot about the place, deterring them from any unclean intentions or impure thoughts like Maga Mikey, or as the author will discover on her second visit. You will discover too where beach hotels are located, surrounded by some of the most amazing tourist attractions, lies impoverished communities houses or shacks with no running water or electricity, children unable to go to school, but only knowing how to survive, to make a dollar, by smiling and selling to the tourists on the beach. This is their upbringing. To quote the author, it's the culture, nothing personal. This is their upbringing. I would say no. It's a subculture merged into a much bigger culture, where people are highly educated, appreciative of their culture, happy to promote it, happy to share their stories, tell tales, and entertain. Had the author been a bit more adventurous, she would have discovered that Jamaicans on the whole are truly amazing people. Though sometimes appearing serious, hasty, arrogant, they are just as polite, subtle, generous, and fun. I felt that the author, had she been free from judgment, would have found her trips to Jamaica even more enriching and would hope that she would return and discover yet another side of tourism. However, one has to sing her praises and admire her brevity, her fear of criticism and creativity to write Jamaican patois in a way that even locals can read and enjoy. Though some words may not be spelled or have been interpreted differently, though at times code switching even during a sentence of a Jamaican local became evident, the author cleverly displayed ownership of the language that she was discovering and wrote an incredible piece of literature. Her ability to use code switching at opportune times and even as her own thoughts permeated showed her subconscious longing to learn more about the culture. As she wrote, accepting that gruffness was a part of the culture I conceded. Recognizing her own inept way of responding as she states, my mother's influences to call and made judgment. I winced at the coarse dialect and unrefined tone. 
The words precision, professional, proper. Her wanting to examine every place of nook and cranny, as we say in the Caribbean, brings out her British culture even more. As quoted, I was constantly in dissension with who I was and who I had become. I couldn't stand it. Had they received no training on how to speak properly? That wanting to criticize and constant frustration by the slow pace and lack of punctuality and sense of time is a culture that has left its legacy even throughout the Caribbean, which is usually described as British snobbery. We all do it. Another attribute that is very British is sticking to one thing, one place. For example, the author's experience at the Seagull restaurant, as she proclaims, because the food was so good, I ate at the Seagull in the morning for breakfast, in the afternoon for lunch, and in the evening for dinner. British guests, once they discover a hotel, a, resta a restaurant, and made a good impression the first time, they are not keen to go anywhere else. There is no part of our Caribbean culture that would do that. We simply love to explore and discover new places, people, and things. I want to say to the author, you are a tourist in Jamaica. You have an opportunity to become a friend of Jamaica, and you should be a proud black British woman visiting the homeland of your parents. To describe herself as a black British Jamaican puzzles me, as it would any Jamaican, but yet one can understand and empathize. A hey, tourists, at $20 for this, you know? Let me know if you want some. Me have to see if we can make some money off it. Well, you're definitely not getting any money from me. And that little dirty piece of green leaf and fancy calling me tourists. How did he know I wasn't born in Jamaica? How could he possibly know? When all he displayed from your accent to your body language was very British. Again, as the author discovered, as she dismayed, as she, as she tried to speak Jamaican patois with the locals, the oscillation of accents was becoming tiresome and definitely not working to my advantage. At times, I felt compassionate for the author. I felt compassion and wished that her mother had shared some of the richness of her heritage with her. To quote, to test the consistency and taste, the lady dipped a spoon in the concoction and tipped some into the palm of her hand so she could taste it. I like the way she did that. My mother always did that when she tasted the soup she was making. I didn't see people do that much anymore in England. We still do in the Caribbean. The people of Jamaica are what we describe in the Caribbean as straight up. You don't have to second guess their intentions or motives. You know right away what they want and why. In the Caribbean, we find the British tourists difficult and sometimes demanding. But once you, get to, once you get them to unwind, they can be a lot of fun. Some of the women come to the islands with a particular mindset about what they want. And they sure do go out of their way to get it, as, ex as explained by the dread on the author's second visit. There would have been no discrimination against Maga Mikey. Although in reverse, Maga Mikey would not be reciprocated the very hospitality he extended in Jamaica, in England. So as our author found the intruders at the beach irritating, there are others who would find it simply sensational. I can recall one guest at a hotel I managed in Grenada asking for reimbursement because the rain fell for three days and we said in our brochure it was a dry season. I soon quieted him with a rum punch and pointed out to him the sheer joy of being away from the pressures of work in England, reading a book on the veranda of your hotel, making love to your wife. All these can be purely rejuvenating if you allow yourself to relax and take in the beauty that you have been blessed with. 